do singing. You're not going to sing Man of Constant Sorrow just because I'm going to slide behind that microphone. <laughs> Bible tonight. Let's see here. Go to the book of Acts. Chapter nine or chapter eight. Been thinking a lot about witnessing. Amen. Been thinking a lot about telling people about Jesus. You want to know what we're called to do? That's it. Preach. To be ready. Be ready when somebody needs us or if they don't need us. Amen. Amen. Be ready. Hey, we want to walk around and look around for somebody. It's kind of like spotlighting. Hey, Amen. Now, I wouldn't do that because it gets you arrested real quick. But you do that because it's easy, right? You shine a light, I've heard. Uh, you shine a light out the window, and uh, when you see the eyes, you shoot at it. Now, this ain't an instructional video, but that's how we are sometimes when we want to witness or tell somebody about Jesus. Keith, I want the easy one. I want the one that shows up on Sunday morning, and I can tell they're broken when they got get here, and they're already looking for something, and that's the kind I want. I don't want one I gotta go look for. I don't wanna walk two miles in the back of the woods and set up in a tree stand and freeze to death and wait for a deer to actually come to me. It's a whole lot easier just to hit the field. But what if we went out into the world Amen. looking for somebody to tell about Jesus? Amen. Now you'll you'll always if if your light shines, you uh, a uh, city on a hill cannot be hid. Uh, you don't light a candle to hide it under a, a, a bushel basket. Amen. Depending on what translation you're reading. Uh, Jesus ignited a light in you. Uh, if you'll have it, he put uh, four D cell batteries in you in an LED bulb and turns you on that the world could see him. Not you. Not your goodness. Not your abilities. Uh, but, but Jesus, his forgiveness, his salvation, his goodness, his healing, his mercy. And I could go on and on. And he has illuminated us uh, to go out into a world that with people pass by, they see something different and they know something's different. And it, it ought to be like bugs. You ever go out and sit on the porch when you flip the light on? Here they come. Amen. That's how we should be in this world. When I go into a dark place, Ron, a light, when light hits a dark place, it's got to go. A little bit of light will drive out a huge amount of darkness. But we walk around sometimes and, and bail it and hide it because we're afraid to use it. Amen. I'm afraid of what somebody's going to say. I'm afraid uh, that I'm going to go tell them how good Jesus is and they ain't going to accept it and then I think I'm a failure. It ain't about you. It's never been about you. You are a failure, praise God, but the one in you ain't. Amen. 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 The one in you will never be a failure. And you, it ain't up to you uh, where the seed goes. Your job is to plant it. Amen. Just throw it and let Jesus do what he's got to do. Amen. But we're scared. Can I get amen? We want, we want to see it. I expect to walk up somebody at Walmart, Greg, tell them about Jesus. They drop down right there. Amen. A revival breakout, 20 people in Walmart gather around, look like a small Billy Graham convention. And is that right? Come on. But what about when they say, get away from me, holy roller? Come on. Jesus freak, I don't want to listen to that garbage or junk or whatever word. That, sometimes you get that. Yep. But praise God, you still planted a seed. Amen. You ever get so mad at somebody? You just can't get it off your mind. <laughs> Amen. If I can't get you saved, I hope I make you that man. In Jesus' name. That you'll go home and think about it. And, and fume on it. But it's Jesus. Amen. Maybe you're, maybe you're making them mad or offending them is the catalyst to make them think about Jesus. God's all, hey, I love the fact that he's always working. Amen. Always. 
I'm going to tell a story. I got to. This, I can't remember if it's Monday or Tuesday. I got thinking about tattoos. I thought, man, I ain't had one in a while. And I got about three on my phone, Sean, I want to get. So I got a free moment at work. I get my phone out and I hit up my tattoo artist. Hey, brother, what's up? Well, you got toward the end of the month. I'm going to get some work done. He sent me one back. Not working today, but I'll check when I get back and let you know. It's a good deal, man. Worked the rest of the day, started home. I'm about to get happy, so y'all better hang on for a minute. I started home, Sean. I get a text from my tattoo guy. He said, last night I started reading my Bible again. He said, I want to get me and my family baptized. And I ain't heard from you in a couple of months. And I figure that God had you text me where I could ask you if you do. Amen. <laughs> I said, I'll be honored. I almost said, will you knock some off my next tattoo? <laughs> my man. But hey, you know, I can't get no selfish gain in there. Come on, y'all have been thinking that too. But when that happened, man, I, Sean, I felt like I was going to explode, man. Amen. I said, brother, I would be honored Amen. to do it. Amen. See, God was working. Amen. He was working way. I was just thinking about getting a tattoo. I wasn't thinking about getting nobody to Jesus. I wasn't thinking about adding nobody to the kingdom. I just wanted some sweet ink to cover up this hole right here. That's all I was thinking about, amen. But Jesus said, I see, he was working the night before. Amen. amen. That's how good God is. Amen. Hey, and I don't care if you agree with tattoos or not, that's between you and Jesus. Take it up with him. Hey, that's just enough. He just used it. Amen. He just you used know. my love of tattoos. To show somebody that had been, I just, I'll show you the text if you don't believe me. I'm going to save them. I've screenshotted them and saved them to my photos. I just started reading my Bible last night. Oh, that's sweet. That's awesome. No, there ain't no luck. How will they hear? See, I spent, yeah, this will be hard to believe, but I spent quite a bit of time in a tattoo parlor. And Sean, I don't go in there and talk about how good the music is. Come on, brother. And I don't go in there and talk about what I used to do and who I used to be. Uh-uh, man, when I get in that chair, I'm, I'm about to talk about Jesus. I'm going to talk about church. I'm going to talk about how good he's been to me. I don't care if you, I had one girl do him. She didn't go to church. Don't care. Amen. I'm paying you. You're putting it in. I'm going to talk about Jesus. You can talk about whatever you want. But if you let your light shine, I'm not bragging or boasting. I'm bragging on God. We can let our light shine everywhere we go. And regardless if we think somebody sees it or not, amen, you cannot say, I don't see a light. If you're lost in the woods and you see a big light shining out there, you got to acknowledge it. Amen. Now, you don't have to go to it, but you've seen it. We are that light. And God has opportunities. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Opportunities. God is equal opportunity. God don't care what color you are. God don't care how much money you make. God don't care where you come from. All he's worried about is where you're going. Amen. All he's worried about is saving you. This ain't a black thing. It ain't a white thing. And uh -uh, they ain't no black Christians, white Christians, black church, white church. No, there is the church. Amen. Amen. Because when you say I'm a white Christian, you take the emphasis off Christian and put it on the color of your skin. And God don't care what color you are. He's worried about the church. Amen. And if we go out here and shine a light the way it's supposed to be shown, none of that stuff matters. We're opportunity. You have an opportunity every day to shine your light in a dark place. Amen. When you don't testify, when you don't speak about God, when you don't witness, you're really doing it. You're doing the other. Now, I ain't telling you you got to go out there and beat somebody to death with Jesus. 
But I ain't telling you not to. You got to listen to what the Spirit's telling you to do. Everybody in here at some point, God's told you to witness and you ain't done it. Everybody in here has tried to do it yourself without God telling you to. And it ain't like God said, I can't believe you went and done that. No. Ron, I'd rather be made to look a fool. I'd rather mumble through it, misquote a scripture, whatever it takes, and I'm still going to tell you about Jesus. I, that's what I told him at work. One of the guys at work watched one of my messages where he's on the pizza, and he was laughing about it. I said, I don't care. I use whatever. we got to be willing to take that opportunity. Verse 26, book of Acts, chapter 8. Everybody there? I'm going to read a little bit. Very familiar scripture. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is a desert. Angel Lord said, Hey, get up and go. Didn't tell him why. Too many of us sitting around trying to figure out what God's doing, why he wants you to do this, why he wants you to do that. No, when God says go, go. When the angel of the Lord says go, go. When the Bible says to do it, do it. You ain't got to pray about it. You ain't got to think about it. All you're trying to do is talk yourself out of it. Amen. Amen. If more of us just went because God told us to go, the world will be a better place. Amen. They'd be more saved people. They'd be more healed people. They'd be more delivered people. Uh, they'd be all of those things. If only we as Christians, amen, we can't blame lost folk because they don't know no better. I can't expect a sinner to behave and act like me. Why? Because they ain't got what I got. Amen. Amen. And without Jesus, I couldn't Amen. act right. Amen. We are the only hope they got. But if we don't go, Amen. if you don't go, if I don't go, I don't need to know. I know God's plan. I know enough of it, Ron, to know that God has never led me astray. And when he says go, I should go because there's a reason. Y'all heard me, one of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah. An angel of the Lord said unto me, Whom shall I send? And who will go for me? And I said, Lord, I'll go. That's what I've lived by. I'll go. Why? Because you went for me. Amen. 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 Verse 27 says, And he arose and went. And he arose and went. That's pretty hard to figure out that equation. The angel said go, and he went. What if that was us? Oh, when I'm reading it, Keith, it's easy. But when it's go time, when it's me that God says go, and I try to figure out why I can't, or why I shouldn't. Or why the timing ain't right. Or Ron, I ain't got the fancy words they need to hear. Or I ain't got this or I ain't got that. I've got the spirit. That's all I need. If he's telling me to go, what we got to get in our heads, if God is telling me to move, he is already working on the other end. God ain't going to send you off somewhere where you'll be made to look a fool. Why? Because if you look like a fool, so will he. Amen. How many of you want your kids to go to Walmart, fall down on the floor and wall around, kick, pitch a fit because it makes you look good? Anybody? No, ain't nobody in here that ignorant. You snatch them up. Back in my day, you didn't do that stuff. Amen. Uh, the hearse and the ambulance would have pulled up if I'd done that when I was a kid. And my mom and dad beat me dead right there on aisle six with Piggly Wiggly. Mm -hmm. And you thank God who's a better parent than any of us, who loves us, who gave his only son for us, wants us to go out here and fail, <clears throat> ain't going to happen. If he's saying go, we need to go. Just because, hear me, make a note of this, just because God said so. Amen. Amen. Plain and simple. And I'll add another note to that. Sometimes we want a big, booming voice 
to break down through heaven. Chad. Yes, God. My good and faithful servant. My, my God still talks to old King James, so I don't know about y'all. Pick up thy cell phone and, and make a tattoo appointment. I have appointed. No. Sometimes it's something in you. And it can be a simple, and I ain't, everybody's going to say, you mean Jesus told you to get a tattoo? That ain't what I'm saying. Amen? But he can work in anything. Amen. We just got to do it. Amen. How many people in here, God's ever laid some on your hearts? You need to text them. You need to call them. You need to check on them. Now, uh, keep your hand up if you've done it every time. Let me get mine down right quick. I'll do it later. I'm busy. Any other excuse you want to throw in there? See, I don't know about y'all, man, but I have a hard time sometimes keep with the simple stuff. Relationship. And when God tries to tell us to do something, Amen. He's working. Amen. And there's a reason for it. Amen. God knows we're busy. Amen. Hey, God knows I get up at, at, at 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and go to work, and, and I'm pretty busy all day. Uh, and you know what? My God takes that into account. Now, my God don't crack a whip on me all the time, but you know what? If He sees something needs to be done during that day and He places that on my heart, there's a reason for that. Amen. And we should know by now. I should. I, I, I've been saved probably uh, longer than most of y'all are, are close. Uh, I should know by now that when God puts something on my heart, I need to do just like this dude did. Arise and go. And we think, well, he didn't have to get up and go to work. He didn't have them. Anybody ever read that? You read about the old, read the Bible and think about in the olden days, it's simpler time back then. No, it wouldn't. He walked four days to get somewhere, and I can drive her in 20 minutes in my Toyota. See, if we if we always keep that mindset of how much easier it was or easy going back then, then, then we're just making excuses. It's like scripture. Think about that. Back in the old days, man, if they couldn't write and remember exactly where something's at, they had to flip and look. And, man, now I just whip my phone out. Siri. I ain't even got a, I ain't even got a pass. Put. It can't understand me because it don't speak redneck. But I can speak to it. And it'll tell me where it's at. And he arose and went. And behold, Amen. Behold, he heard the voice, he obeyed the voice, and behold, there is a reason for the voice. A man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. By chance, this guy was at Jerusalem with the queen to worship. And by chance, he was sitting there and reading. And by chance, the angel spoke to him and told him, you need to go down there right now. I see a pattern here, almost like a plan. And was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. That's what I like. Dude sitting there reading the Bible didn't even have a clue what it meant. Amen. I'm just going to read it anyway. Amen. See, when there's a hunger, the Bible says those that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. There was a guy sitting there reading something that made absolutely no sense to him, but he just kept reading it. And by doing that, God sent somebody down there to explain it to him. Who's to say there ain't somebody thirsting right now that God's trying to get us to go to and we ain't going? Amen? For all them people that picked this thing up and said, I read six pages and none of them didn't make sense and, and I just quit. 
should have waited. Should have just kept reading. Should have just kept reading and somebody will come and explain some of it to you. I like this. And then the Spirit said unto Philip. Amen? Then the Spirit said to him. Realize that. The angel told him to go. He went. And when he got there, the Spirit told him what to do. I mean, we all say, I want to be led by the Spirit. I want to be filled with the Spirit. You know what? Sometimes uh, you got to get somewhere where the Spirit is. Amen? Now, hey, the Spirit's always with me. And it's always in me. And it's been there since day one. And it'll be there when I get to heaven. Amen. But you know what? The Bible says it can be offended. How do you offend somebody? Well, listen to them. Go out to eat with your wife. Amen. And let her talk and talk and talk. Don't listen. Get your phone out. So who's listening to the ball game? See if she don't get... And this is a cleaned up word, offended. Go home, your key don't fit. Amen? Think of what the Spirit speaks to us. And we don't listen. Yet we kick back and wonder why God ain't doing nothing. Why aren't you saving people like you used to? Why aren't there this or that? Why? Because well, maybe we don't listen. Amen? It's kind of like your kids. Tell your kids the same thing over and over again. You can see it. Ron, I can see it going in here and coming out. Because they don't listen. They're thinking about something else. You ever, you ever talk to them people and the whole time you're talking to them, you can see the little cog in their head turning because they're trying to think of what they're going to say? You know, they ain't listening. That's us. Amen? And then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join yourself to this chariot. We all want opportunity, right? Right? Amen. But are we going to take it when it's there? Amen. See, we want Billy Graham opportunity. I don't want some dude sitting out in the back of the car that ain't got a clue opportunities. I like it. And Philip ran. To him. I love that. He ran to him. He said, There he is. Amen. I can, in my mind, I picture the Spirit saying, Go to him. There he is. He is sitting on ready. And you need to get over there. And he said, You know what? I'm going to go. I don't care where he comes from. Don't care what he speaks. Don't know what he don't care what he knows. All I got and all I know is I got to tell him what I know. And as he ran to him, he heard him read Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what you read? And he said, How can I? It's kind of like reading Numbers and Deuteronomy. How can I? Except some man should guide me. Now who's to say dude ain't sitting there in his chariot, Ron, reading Isaiah, going, what the heck does that mean? We've all done it. Who's to say he didn't say, I wish I had somebody that could explain that to me. I pray somebody would explain that to me that it makes sense. You don't know. And in that moment, the angel and the spirit said, I got a man for that. I got somebody that can do that. Let's see if he'll go. Now we expect God to grab us in a headlock and drag us. We expect him to come floating in on a silver platter. Sometimes we got to get to the place where God's working. See, God was already there working on his heart through the word. The word convicts you. This right here is what convicts you. This right here 
This is what will get you living right. Songs are good. I love songs. And, and it can break your heart and a song can beat you. I ain't never going to say nothing bad about singing. But you know what? At the end of it, most of that singing will have something to do with the Word. Amen. And the Bible says if they be begotten, they'll be gotten by the Word. And you read it long enough. And something will hunger. There's a hunger that will come up. And God will respect that. God will honor that. God, hey, thank you, Lord. He will not let you remain ignorant. Amen. Amen. He said, oh, I, you want to read it? See, we look at it from Philip. He was up here. He, he was just ready. No, it started with this dude reading something that didn't make sense, but he was putting forth the effort. And God said, I will not let that effort go to waste. I'm going to send somebody down there to explain to you the basics of it. That's all I needed to know, Ron. I've got book after book of commentaries and, and smart dudes that, that can go into all these details. I didn't need none of that, Keith. I didn't need none of that. I needed to know that Jesus... Loved the drunks. Loved the thieves. Long, loved the long-haired, earring-wearing guys in the back. That's what I needed to know to begin with. Then after that, when I when I got my Bible, and I've told y'all before, I started reading in Genesis, and I read it every day. And in three months, I read it from cover to cover. And, and I would tell you, if you're ever going to do that, start in the New Testament. Uh, please, Jesus, don't start in the back. Man, you talking about bogging me down, Greg. When I got about Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and all that, man, that, that's tough reading. A man can only go through so many begots, amen. And I was like this Ethiopian. I need somebody to come tell me what all this is. But you know what? There was people there. There's people here. That is our calling, to go where God is working. Amen. See, we want God to work on us. He shouldn't have to work on me. Now, y'all don't take that wrong. I'm not perfect. I ain't talking about working on my anger issues or any of my other problems. I'm talking about working on me being obedient. He shouldn't have to get up and work on that. I should already know how good God is. I should already know what the voice of God sounds like. He said, my sheep will hear my voice and no other will they answer. So when something tells me, the devil will never get up and say, hey, go over and explain the Bible to that guy. That'll teach him. No. It's got to make sense. But this dude was sitting there and reading and putting forth the effort. God honored that. I love that. Amen. But he honored it through somebody. My whole point tonight, if you take anything out of this, you need, I need, we need to be that somebody. Amen. You are somebody's somebody. Whether it's to explain the scriptures or explain how good God is in something in your life or what he's done. We are somebody, somebody, and somebody right now don't understand something, amen. And we do. Why? Because God. Amen. Not you. Right. Not your infinite wisdom. They don't need me to come tell them a joke. They don't need me to come and know. They need me to come and tell them what Jesus said. Simplicity. Amen. God's already working for you. Get there. Amen? We're the ones that complicate it. We're the ones that figure out. And I'll tell you what, Ron, I believe it. No, you ain't got to agree or not. But I believe if God tries to send you and you don't go, he'll send somebody else. Amen. You ain't, and, 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 and don't get me wrong when I say this, you ain't that important in the kingdom. That God's going to stop his work because you being ignorant. Now, I am God's favorite. You can get over that or whatever. But just because I say, well, God, I ain't going to do that, he, he don't go, well, I guess that guy don't need to understand it then. Nope. He said, let me speak to somebody else. And we realize it's bigger than us. It's more important than us. We listen for the voice of God, and we know it's him. And he went. How can I? except somebody guides me. And he desired Philip 
And he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the Enoch answered Philip and said, I pray you, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture, and preached Jesus. I don't care what scripture somebody's hung up on. I don't care uh, what worldly view they're hung up on. I don't care what CNN says if they're hung up on that. Don't you go with your opinion. Don't you go with your thoughts. Don't you go. You start at Jesus. Amen. amen. And if you start there, you will never go wrong. Too many people out here trying to solve problems. Amen. You ain't no problem solver. Amen. You ain't uh, what they call that uh, what were you, you ain't no Christian counselor I don't care if you got an online degree you better start at the feet of Jesus get them there amen and then he'll take care of the rest amen. and if you I tell you what I can put Jesus he's like hot sauce amen I can put it on everything amen. and you can too there's somebody out there right now looking for something and you know what Greg before I met Jesus, I always looked for something. I just didn't know what I was looking for until somebody come and told me about Jesus. And when they started at Jesus, I found exactly what I'd always been looking for. It don't matter where they're looking at or what they're looking for. It'll always be Jesus. Amen. That's all you got to tell them. Ron, they don't care about the wheel inside the wheel. They don't care about the seventh seal of the book of Revelation. They don't care about none of that. That ain't going to get you in there. But you know what? The name of Jesus will. That's all that matters. That's right. Come on. They ain't looking for somebody smart, praise God. They ain't looking for somebody uh, that can speak big old long words. They're looking for Jesus. And you know what? Most of them don't even realize it. And we have it. We hold it. We possess it, amen. And you've got more than enough. Amen. And you have the ability. Why? Because he's already in you. Amen. And if something's in you, it's got to come out. Amen. I, I got a, a groundhog at the house right now and I'm trying to catch it. And, and I've got me some cantaloupe out there and, and they won't eat it till it gets rotten. I don't know what it is. But when that thing gets black, uh, they'll come and eat it. And, and Ron, I'm going to go out there one morning and there he's going to be in my live trap. And you know what? When I open that, I always take them off somewhere and turn them loose because I ain't going to kill them. But when I take him out there and I open the cage, guess what's going to come out of there? A groundhog. Amen. It ain't going to be a bear. It ain't going to be a squirrel. Uh, what's in that thing is what's going to come out. And what's in you is what's going to come out. I can find Jesus in everything. I can find Jesus in a hamburger. I can find him in a hot dog. I can find him in a DiGiorno pizza, a Totino's pizza, Bigfoot, Mothman, a chicken. I can find Jesus in everything. Why? Because that's what's in me. Amen. And it's got to come out. has to. We worry. And, and, and we try to figure, how am I going to do it? And how am I going to do it? Don't worry about how you do it. The Spirit was there before he got there. The Spirit was already working before he got there. Amen. He didn't have to waste time. All he had to do, Ron, was concentrate on the one thing that mattered. And that's Jesus. You know how you get your kids saved? Jesus. You know how you get your buddies off alcohol or drugs? Jesus. You don't know how to get people healed? Jesus. You don't know how to get them set free? Jesus. You don't know how to give them peace? Jesus. You don't know how to give them long life and the streets of gold and a mansion? Jesus. And I can go on and on and on. But there ain't no point in it. He gave them what he had. He said, I'm going to start right here. Right now they're starting people all over the place. We'll get you fixed. No, no, no. I ain't going to get you fixed. I'm going to get you Jesus, and then you'll stay fixed. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to fix you. I'm going to give you Jesus, Amen. and then you'll stay fixed. Because if I fix you, you'll think you don't need Jesus. And my fix won't keep you. 
Amen. Uh, it may patch you up for a little while. It may make you warm, fuzzy feeling. It may get you in church for a week or two, but it won't keep you. Amen. But if I get you with Jesus, ain't nobody can take you out of his hand. Amen. I love that. We got to get back to just getting with Jesus. We got to start at Jesus. Remember before you read the Bible a whole lot, and I ain't bad, and I love you, you should read your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, there's something wrong with you. If you don't read your Bible, you need to get saved. Amen. You can mark that. Amen. But remember, when you first got saved, and oh, you didn't know nothing. That's like giving me a gun with no instructions. That's what it was when I got saved. You gave me a Jesus gun, but I didn't have no instructions. And I couldn't tell you nothing but Jesus. Everything. I went to work. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for a sandwich I had when I was six years old. I, I, everything was Jesus. That's the way it should be. We should still be like that. We should still be like that. Quit trying to solve people's problems. You ain't Dr. Phil. You ain't Oprah. But we know the best physician. His name is Jesus. We need to start them at Jesus. That's what we're missing a little excited on that. That's good stuff. And as they went on their way, they come into a certain water. And Enoch said, see, here's water. What does hinder me from being baptized? So see, he had to start at the beginning. He preached about Jesus. He told him about Jesus. He told him about being baptized. Now, y'all heard me say it. You ain't got to be baptized to get to heaven. If you do, somebody better go tell that thief on the cross because he's in heaven right now. You better run him down and tell him he ain't supposed to be there. Amen. But I also believe if you have opportunity, you should be. I believe if you have an opportunity to be baptized, if you're on the cross, they might overlook it, amen. But if you got a chance to go to the river, I'd go and get somebody to baptize me. But he began to preach the basics, I'll tell you about Jesus. And then look, when he hit him with Jesus, and he started him in the right place, the next thing wouldn't say, he didn't say, let's go to the bank where I can get some money. He didn't get carried away with material things or anything like that. It went right in order with what? With what thus saith the word of God. I got him saved. Look, there's some water. Let's, let's check out this baptizing thing you've been talking about. We've got to quit trying to patch them up and start them at the basics because the basics is all you need. Amen. Hey, when I get to heaven, there ain't going to be an entry exam. There ain't going to be an IQ test. There ain't going to be a save-a-meter where they weigh me on a scale and how many people's got saved because me goes up or down and there's a certain range i got to hit like a BMI. No. It's going to be the basics. It's going to be the simplest of the simple. Is the blood there. Amen. Is the blood there. Amen. Maybe they'll spray me down with luminol. I don't know. He might don't know them and all makes blood show up. Maybe they'll be able they'll come out there. Remember that boy the Starlight Bloodhound you used to use when you deer hunt? You spray it and you can see the blood trail. Maybe Peter will run out there and spray me down with a Windex bottle. As long as he sees the blood, that's all that matters. Because once you get the blood, once we start them at the basics, and the basics take root, everything else follows. Amen? Mm -hmm. Everything else follows. See, people have promised people everything in the world, but they can't keep them. The church has promised people everything in the world, but it can't keep them. Jesus will keep them. The basics will keep them. The blood's been keeping them for 2,000 years, and the blood will be keeping them for 2,000 more, as long as this world keeps going. Philip said, verse 37, If thou believest with all your heart, you mayest. 
And he answered and said unto him, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And he commanded the chariot to stand still and went down both into the water and Philip and the Enoch and he baptized him. And when he come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called away Philip that the Enoch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Zotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. He got his job done. The Spirit took him to the next. Got his job done, and the Spirit took him to the next. That's my kind of job right there, Sean. I like to roll up on a job. Everything's already ready. I ain't got to do no work. I just got to walk up there and tell them what I know. Imagine that on my job. What if I went in there in the morning and I got there at 5 o'clock and everything was ready. I didn't have to touch nothing. All I had to do was walk up there, Greg, and tell them how good it was going to run. And bam, it started up, run perfect, and I was going on to the next job. That's the way it is with us. God sends you, he's already working. Everywhere you go, he's working. Whether you see it or not, you ain't got to see it. We just got to be obedient to what the Spirit's trying to tell us. Amen. Even though sometimes we don't really care if somebody gets saved or not. Can I get amen? God's always working on it. And who's to say he ain't working right where you're going? Too many of us hanging out on the wrong job because we ain't finished it yet. And we can't get carried away to the next one. Amen? All right. Anybody got anything to say or do? <laughs> May not be earth shattering, but what's on my heart tonight? Uh, we got to get back to, to obeying the Spirit and get back to telling them about Jesus. I like that verse 27. It says, So he got up and went, and now that he's helping us, you know, a court official carried the queen of Egypt of all our treasure and he has come to Jerusalem to worship. Man. I think we can only say that he inhabited the praises and worship of his people and he was out worshiping the night right after that he was found reading. Yep. And he got around those who could believe him and I got that you know after the Lord spoke that to me and that, he said I inhabited the praises of my people he said you inhabit the praises of people, what if someone is salvation or yoke or anything depends on you standing up and praising because his word says he will inhabit those praises. He will inhabit it. And his spirit comes in. Somebody sitting there, broken, beat down, or needing salvation and by you going back for not for what he's going to do, but what he's already done. Man. And you worship him get your mindset on where you've been and where he's dropped you from and he ain't done mm -mm. and you I mean, get that spirit of the almighty God to come in and do what he can do like you said we can't do nothing mm -mm. but we can get the presence of the almighty Amen. God up in this place why look what he's done for us yeah. well on those things Paul says it man that laid or not in our head you know and, uh, you know our heart he said, believe in your heart and you shall be saved. Yep. You know, our mind has got to catch up with our heart. Yeah. Our mind's looking for where it don't need to be. Thank yeah. God our heart. He said, out of, out of your heart's what's going to flow. That's right. What you put in, that's what's going to flow. But still this world and the things and you try to figure out what's up here. And you know, it's what's in your heart. And, you know, where he brought us from, the things that he's done for. And that's why he's been dealing with me the last couple weeks, man. Why are you, why are you worried about things ahead of you? Look what I've already done for you, man. Amen. Just dwell, dwell in his goodness of what he's already done. Because he said, I started something. And he said, I'll finish it. You know, and he's done, done all these good things for you. There's no, there ain't no telling what he's got on that So help somebody else up, you know. Amen. Well, we come in Sunday, Wednesday. If we're not careful, we'll do it during revival. 
We'll come in waiting for somebody to stir us up. We'll come in waiting for a song to excite me. We'll, I'll wait for a word to excite me. I'll wait for... Dude, I ought to be, I ought to be excited as I'm ever going to get before I get here. Tell my people to be moved by the Spirit. You'll do this. And you, you read it. And before I come this evening, uh, you know, I think about Peter and John, book of Acts 3. Uh, they were just going to the temple. See this man. They weren't led by the Spirit. They, they were doing what they normally Amen. what man God would be doing. And on their way, they seen this. And they said, I got no silver to go. But what I do have in the name of Jesus to get up. And reached out and helped him up. Yep. Uh, he says in his word to go into the world and preach the gospel. He's done told us to go. Uh, uh, praise God, he does let us know when sometimes that uh, spirit. Because I've had to go back in the store and pray because he didn't even know him, didn't even want to do it. And the word about yep. where everybody else thinks it don't matter what they think. I went back and done it anyway. Yep. I've not seen him since. But I want to see him, see if it's pleased to God that did him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what it was then, I thought. Get what it is, but anyways, but you know, I, I, I turn around to the light, and I said, if you can believe it, you can do this. I said, I feel like I need to pray for it. So let's pray, and we pray, and all that. Amen. But, you know, just be obedient. But we got that opportunity every time we turn the corner, man. And imagine that dude in Acts. I've always, every time I read that, I think of that. How many people did he ask? Oh, Lord. Continually come. They're going into the temple. It's supposed to be the presence of God. What's the, what's the chances that they pass by him? What's the chances that he called out to them? Kind of like I said. Amen? Amen. Because they, they, they was having one of them like I was talking about jump in the middle of people shattered like cockroaches when you turn the lights on. They was ready. They was ready to rock. They was ready for, you ever been in one of them moves, man? You ready? I'm ready for somebody to ask me about Jesus. Because when they do, Sean, they've had it. They're like, they get that look on their face because they know they done messed up. He ain't going to shut up. Before he went to get crucified, what did he tell Peter three times? Yep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Three times. Because he knew they'd need it. Mm -hmm. He said, strike the shepherd, the sheep. Scatter. They're still scattered. We got to feed them. Somebody sat there and read, don't go, ain't got a clue, but by no means will I catch anybody out that comes to me. Amen. That, that'll be something or somebody or some way is going to happen. If your heart's in it, he will make a way somehow for you. He will always, God will always honor effort. Yeah. Always. Uh, He'll always honor effort. If you don't believe me, put some effort in something in the kingdom see if God don't honor it. So, all right, anybody else?